Then I'll go on to Sosgangarium and uh, some ideas in psychology about senses of consciousness and about how you can help yourself to grow up that way. Now, I'm not going into a great detail on these things because I think it gets wrong boring. And my idea of a teacher is somebody who gives you the tools to teach yourself. So basically what I'm going to do is just give you a brief outline heading. And if you're interested, you can read up or listen to Gurdjieff's tapes, etc., etc. And uh, in case I forget at the end, two tapes I suggest you get if you're interested. One is Kundalini, which is the one you're going to hear. Um, which is UK 78 stroke 31. And the other is a double tape on Raj Yoga. Now, some of you may remember the first course of Bournemouth. Uh, I played a little bit from it when we did the ethical restraints, the Yama, the way to live, the five commandments, if you like, where you had to draw from the hat, maybe you had non-stealing or non-lying, you had to practice that and be aware of all your actions for a month or whatever you do. And it's a good idea, by the way, to do that now again, to just pick one of the numbers, put your finger on it and say, right, I'm going to go on non-hoarding, <laughs> brahmacharya, or something like that, and just watch my actions, and that will improve me for a month. And in Raj Yoga, Guruji goes through the whole of the eight limbs of yoga, the Nayama, the cleansing, and everything. It's very, very interesting. And, yeah, we want to create, we want to improve ourselves, so let's have a go at that. Oh, no. Raj Yoga, I don't know the name, but you don't watch that. No, sorry. <laughs> I can give it to you afterwards, uh, Lindsay. Uh, fine, everybody. Sorry. Okay, now I've drawn a diagram, at least I haven't. My daughter in law might bludgeon to death. Uh, <laughs> she has drawn a nice diagram for us, but uh, the words, the, um, we could get a big enough sheet of car, but I'm making excuses, aren't I? So um, I'll leave it up because the names of the chakras are there and um, leave it up if you want to copy them down, etc. But I will also tell you about them. <laughs> okay, uh, so there we are, a classical pose that you see in the lotus position, ideal for meditation, <laughs> all practice. Now years ago I used to think I was fit and try and do that, and great, you get in for about 20 minutes, and then I get up and walk like a kid <laughs> around the walls. I know Karen's laughing, she can do it. <laughs> okay, so chakras, energies. First, there's a lot of symbolism in this, and it has been made into an awful lot of mysticism, mystery, etc., by people in the West, I think. Originally, the idea in the East, where this developed in the Aaron Rose, was to illustrate, to put it in simple words for people. Sanskrit, as you know, is, I think it has 42 letters, I've got an exact number in the sort of alphabet, uh, but they're based on the sounds of nature, the rustling of the leaves, the grass, the animals, the movements of the feet, etc. And those sounds were then used into words. And it is, I think, the basic root language of all languages. <laughs> and they were used a lot of symbolism, just as Jesus, for instance, and the disciples used parables and tell tales and parables, because that was the way of putting it over. That, I think, has been built on. And one of the infinite number of reasons why I love Guruji so much is he does de debunk an awful lot of this stuff. Um, he's always got his piece, as I called it, on the ground, or one foot on the ground, in play. Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, you know, food, it's not necessary, just get on living, don't worry about these, live a good life, life of love, etc. Put it all on the tapes, and then we'll get there. And it's true. But at the same time, of course, you've got to help yourself as well. 
Uh, it's shortening the span of a million lifetimes down to 500,000. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so chakras then are centers of nervous energy, and you will find a lot written about them. There are X number, there are eight, there are seven, there are five, there are ten. So let's get on with the idea that Guruji says. There are seven chakras, major chakras. They are centers of nervous energy in the subtle body. There are 760 minor chakras in the physical body and presumably also in the subtle body too. And those 761 seem to correspond with the Chinese acupressure, acupuncture points. Funny enough, they have all been matched up. Now, symbolically, the chakras are illustrated as here. And we have two, three other nerves. One is called the Shashanka, that red line that goes up the center of the body, up the spine. But it goes up in the subtle body, not really in the physical body. And the other two, the Ida or Ida, the Pingala or Pingala, and the brown and white lines, traditionally um, on that one, the Ida is in a white line, and I found great difficulty in drawing a white line on white paper, so I made it brown, okay? And the Pingala or Pingala, depending on uh, how you want to pronounce it, is the blue one. And they start at the base of the spine, so that the Ida starts on the left-hand side, the Pingala on the right, and in theory they both finish up in the opposite nostril. Peter, can you just point them out, because we can't see them yeah. up. Yes, yeah, sorry, okay. The Ida and the Pingala. I'll see them on there. The base one is called the Muladhara, right down at the bottom. And that one is near the entrance to the womb. I'm talking now the classical way, the entrance to the women, women and between the scrotum and the anus in the men. It's right down the very, very, very spot. The next one on the right is the Swadish tan, and that is at the coccyx, the base of the spine, the end of the spinal column, physical spinal column. The manipura, which a lot of us know because a lot of people get it with their chakras swirling or with their mantula which is in the area of the navel. Two inches below the navel, two fingers breadth below the navel, on the navel. You take a choice to which, of which particular part you read about. The Anhata, or the Anahata, see it spelled both ways, is in the area of the heart. Others will say, if you take the center line of Shishamana down the body, the Anahata is two fingers breadth to the right, your right hand side. Here again, you can take your choice on it. The Vishuddha, which is in the area of the throat. The Ajna, or the so-called third eye, here on the forehead. And finally, the Sarisrava, which is right on the top of the head, in the Ponda, whose person though. We are given certain practices relating to chakras. The subtle body, which is the mind. The shishamna is an extension of the brain, as Karaji will put it in some words. We have our brain up in the head, and as he said, we get a message, we get a prick in the arm, finger, we touch something, what happens? The message travels up the nerves of the brain and then down again to that particular area or down the spine and spreads out through the network of nerves in that way. So he says, well, in a way, the spine, the spinal column, is an extension of the brain, so the brain extends right down the body. Now, classical tradition, the shashamna, that center of energy going up the spine, at the base of it, in the Muladhara chakra, symbolically, there is a serpent coiled three and a half times round. And when we meditate, when we improve our consciousness level, that serpent uncoils and gradually goes up the shishamra. Now, for serpent, think of what? Energy, shakti, consciousness. We can put all modern connotations in that, which read really it better than trying to imagine the so-called serpent going up. A serpent of energy is a better way of putting it. 
And that energy goes up the shishamna. And as I said, when it comes out through the top of the head, then we have become enlightened, we've made it. But it's not quite as easy as that. It does go up, but there are blockages on the way. And those blockages are called shashamnas. Um, sorry, let's leave that word for a moment because it's on another sheet of paper. I'll pull that down as we hear Guruji talking on his tape. Um, sorry, about the shashamna. The blockages are called samskaras. Thinking, sorry, samskaras. And uh, those blockages are caused by what we've been doing and happening, etc. Now, normally people will say, yes, you've got blockages in this chakra, that chakra, the other chakra, etc. But Guruji has said all those chakras really are in the brain. And life gets complicated because the brain is also the mind. The mind is a certain body. The, the uh, spinal column is also part of the brain. And okay, we're back to almost back to where we were in our understanding as the people, the yogis, 10,000 years ago were in their symbolism. And the whole life gets complicated. Now, meditation works on the clearing the way from the chakras, clearing the samskaras away from the chakras. That's really all we're trying to do, or we're clearing them out from the brain, generally. And all we're doing is enabling that energy, really, to travel up. You can look at it this way, it's enabling our conscious level, it's like the way I like to think of it, our consciousness, our conscious level, going from way down below and just working its way up until we come from the high point here and we become enlightened. And as it gradually frees itself and comes up, so we get these different feelings within us. And also we get feelings of uh, hang-ups, if you like, coming out, feelings of tears, of sorrowness, feelings of joy. Uh, they're just the samskaras being well, not exactly destroyed, but just being changed, just being altered, just being worked through. And when, they, when that one's worked through, the energy is allowed to go a little bit higher. Now, in traditional yoga, the Kundalini, the, they just worked solely on raising that energy and forgetting about the samskaras. And there are supposed to be traditional ways of doing it, traditional ways of breathing, working out different breathing techniques, uh, different yogic asanas, which you perform for hours on end, and eventually you free Kundalini. There is a very interesting book by Gopi Krishna. Is it Kundalini? I reckon it to you. I think there's another word in the title, but called Kandalini. And here's a man, an uh, Indian, who um, experimented with a lot of these things and tried it and raised Kandalini himself. And he had one hell of a time for about 10 years. His body was on fire. He had aches and pains. He didn't know where on earth he was. Nobody could do anything about it. And it's very good reading, very interesting. And uh, gives a very good warning about messing around with um, strange powers, if you like, strange techniques. It's something you know, she says, I will fooey to. You, know, you don't need those, you just stick with my five basic steps and you're okay. So, dashing around a bit because you're going to hear, we have the two systems, the Eda, the Pingala. Where they cross or in the space formed in between, we get these centers of nervous energy to chakras. In the subtle body, let's think of them as this picture and forget all this business that they're all stored in the brain because the brain is the mind and the mind is the subtle body, blah, 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 as Guruji would say, and take it as its picture. No. So, there we are. What I'd like to do at the moment, uh, can hear Guruji, I'll come back again and talk a bit more, but just want to read a little bit from the book about one of these chakras. And um, in a way, I thought I'd take the Manipura chakra because most of us somehow seem to get the Manipura chakra either in, or the Anhata, as I said, in Mandala or in Swirl technique. And the Manipura chakra is related to the solar plexus, or the solar plexus, or the navel. The element represented is fire, which is obvious. The solar plexus and the gastric fire. The mantra given is draft for red. The sign is a red triangle. 
The animal is the ram. The lotus at this center has ten petals on which are inscribed the ten syllables from dam to fan. The presiding deities are Ruda, the male, and Lakini, the female. And the qualities of fire are luminosity, the heat that is generated by intense activity, burning and consuming nature, generation of energy. And it's interesting to note that this aspect is shared by fire with water, which can also generate energy. Sexual arousal may be experienced at both centers, and misdirected sexual energy may manifest itself as compulsive eating, bad temper, and rage. I hope you don't recognize any of the Indians. Uh, constant upward movement, warmth, purifying, all destroying creative fire of the sun, the cooking and maturing of food and fruits, digestion motion, transmutation of substances and elements, and the mediation between the seen and the unseen, hence gods and humans. Besides all this, fire paradoxically creates something, smoke, which veils it, and the sun, another form of fire, gives rise to, gives rise to clouds, which also veil it. A ram is a sacrificial animal which represents self-sacrifice. Physiologically, the fire element is linked to sight and the organ of excretion as part of the gastric or the uh, alimentary system. And the faculty of speech and their malfunctions is an indication of the balance of the fire element. And we can go on like that. That is people in the West, you know, putting an awful lot of symbolism and mysticism to it. A lot of it, yes, does tie up. We recognize a lot of it within ourselves, don't we? We recognize when we have our astro chart down, our star signs, that we are born <laughs> under a certain sign, and we recognize those characteristics within us. Why? Maybe because we chose to be born this lifetime under that star sign so we could have those characteristics and go. Now, the first three chakras in there, the Muladhara, the Swadhisthan, and the Manipura, tend to agree to deal with the grosser physical body and relating to physical aspects of the body. The Anhata and the Vishuddha the Ajna and the other deal in sending order with the spiritual body. We are given certain swirling techniques and the energy in there really is a swirling in each chapter. It's supposed to be a swirling vortex of energy and we are told to swirl our mantra in that particular chakra that we're given. Now, why are we given that? Well, if all those chakras are working in harmony with one another, then the body is beautifully balanced and we have perfect health and we have everything in there. But normally that doesn't happen with most of us. Somewhere one or maybe more of these chakras are slightly out of step. And the techniques that Guruji gives us is to try to get these chakras back into step again, back into harmony again. And you're given a chakra to work on. Now, I did say the Manipura relates to the gross physical body, and some of you who got that may see symptoms allied in that, in the human body, in your body, allied into the chakra that you're given. But don't, not necessarily because you've been given the Manipura chakra is something out in the physical body. As Guruji said, sometimes it is easier, depending on what is wrong with the harmony, to work upon one chakra, and that may bring all the other one for out into line. So the chakra you're working on, I suppose eight times out of ten is the one that is out of harmony. Those figures are mine, by the way, not Guruji's. And the rest of the time, there are others out of harmony, and this is one. By working on this one, we bring the other or the others back into harmony. Now, the technique he gives is the swirling technique. And what we have to do is to swirl the sound of our mantra in the particular chakra. So let's take the heart one. My tummy hides me, Manipura. Uh, let's take the heart one. It is here, an area, if you like, the size of the fist. Let's imagine it now. I don't know how big it is, how small it is, or what. But take an area of the size of this. And what we do is try to swirl our mantra round. And we swirl it round that way. Okay, we try to swirl the chakra, the mantra in the chakra around that way, as I am looking at it as you are looking at it. So if I have my 
mantra, which we'll say is Fred Smith. I get Fred Smith going around that way. Now, some of you may find that after you've been given that and you're swelling it around, and maybe you've been doing it for two, three, four, five, six weeks, it still seems very, very difficult to bat it. And Guruji has said that about one in every hundred people, as a rough estimate, their chakras revolve the other way. So we're all unique, aren't we, and different. So, if you are finding difficulty in doing that when it just doesn't seem right, and by the way, do wait for quite a few weeks, because when you start a new practice, anything new, it doesn't seem right sometimes until you get in the swing of it and it becomes a natural thing. So if you find it is not and it's difficult, and why not to make KNOT if you've got sort of knots and it just won't go, then just start trying it the other way around and see if that is better for you. And occasionally it will work. Yes, mate. When I'm taught by Swallow, I can start with really has a rich way landing in. I find that sometimes it wants to do one place. Sometimes it goes to the other, yeah. Okay. So does that matter? Should I no. No, if you're happy. The idea, the whole idea really is get movement into that chakra um, so that we can move it around. Um, Guru had just said to me that it does, and probably to a lot of other people, that is the way around that it really should go, and that is the way we teach, tend to teach normally. And his idea that, okay, if it doesn't seem right after some time, when you come back for your checkings for the teacher, you've mentioned it, they will tell you to try swelling it the other way. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else got any bits and pieces on that? I can go into more detail on anything if you like, but we don't want to go hopping along and talking. Maggie? You know, I think the chunk is associated with a particular um, state of mind, like self-responsibility. Yes, I'll finish up at the end, if I may, about that. I said, uh, with what's... Uh, more or less a more modern idea, and to me, a more sensible idea, but uh, okay, this is equally as sensible. But somehow for the Western, the symbolism is not quite right for most people, and let's just accept it right away, and fine. Peter, mm. if we've been told the manicure, should we just stick with that? Manicure? You stick with the manicure all the time, yes. Don't alter it. That's don't think, oh, it's my Arshan Chakra, or if I swirl the Arshan Chakra, I'm going to become psychic and develop all those qualities. No. Um, here again, going back, Kandalini is supposed to be a very dangerous thing if you raise it, as Gopi Krishna found out, and he started doing things like working on this particular chakra or the top chakra before it was ready and ran into all manner of trouble. Um, if you are interested, please talk to Kathy about it. I'm, I recommended the book to her and she read it not so long ago. It's a long time since I read it and I tend to forget that to her. Sorry? Introducing Kandalini or something. Um, yeah, it's his experiences and um, raising it incorrectly. Yeah, that's right. Peter, we said refer to your teacher on some point and said, yeah. what, what do we do about it if we no longer have a teacher? Mind make the movement. Mm -hmm. um, yes, that's a point. On the course is a good opportunity. Or on the telephone. We're all on the telephone. Okay. The nearest. Anybody, it doesn't matter. Oh, I don't. Mm. So I, I phone Jay Eshel. Mm. Yes, phone Jay Eshel. The, the cheapest phone call, the nearest one, because you probably yeah. be on for a bit of time. And, uh, right, thank you. Nearest, it doesn't matter. We're, any teacher, anybody will help. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We are short of teachers, yes, eventually our teaching programme, we're going to have teachers all around the country, but there are blank areas at the moment. Um, yeah, I hear something else, no. Um, Peter, they have blank teachers as well. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just can't think what I was going to say next. Um, right, it'd be rather nice to hear a bit of Gauriji's take on this one, I think. And I'll come back on some modern ideas and uh, maybe talk a bit more. And incidentally, while I remember it, I'm going to start off with it. Do you notice the way Guruji's face changed this morning in that film? Yeah. And uh, at the beginning, he was just like a picture of Hanuman, the monkey god, to me. And he just became more and more like that. 